to you with my heart in pieces and found the God with healing in his hands. I turn to you, put everything behind me and found the God who made all things new. I look to you the God who holds all wisdom. And I trusted you and stepped out on the oceans. You caught my hand among the waves because you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make Wandered in the shadows and found a God who relentlessly pursues. I hid from you, haunted by my failure, and found a God whose grace still covers me. I fell on you when I was at my weakest. The God, the lifter of my head, and I've worshipped you and felt you right beside me. You're the reason that I sing, cause you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make. Let's pray. Dear loving, merciful Father, thank you, Lord, for another opportunity you have given us to come and worship thee. Dear Lord, thank you so much for thy protection, thy help throughout the past week. This morning, we want to praise thee and thank thee because you are an amazing God you are an awesome God who always 
walk with us. Walk ahead of us, walk beside us, and walk behind of us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are there to carry us through. Dear Lord, this morning, we want to say thank you for all the blessings thou art showered upon each one of us. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the Sabbath school. And I submit Mr. Pratap and Isaac into thy, in thy, into thy care, Lord, as he going to teach us the lesson. Let thy Holy Spirit be with him. Abide with him so that whatever he speaks will be helping us to be closer to thee day by day. Thank you once again. Be with us throughout this day. Bless us and take care of us. These few mercies I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. We want to welcome you all for our Sabbath study hour. I can't believe we are in the 13th lesson, the last lesson of this quarter, first quarter of 2021. What a blessing it has been to us. And not the last quarter, the previous quarter, the 13th Sabbath, I remember the Carles were leading out the Sabbath school. They were in the class. Just few of us were here, the participants. I'm happy that they are here this morning too. And they are the, in charge of Sabbath school this morning. I want to thank you for the wonderful Sabbath program that we had. May God continue to bless you all. It has been good to study about Isaiah this quarter. We have been blessed. Before we start a lesson, shall we have a word of prayer? Gracious, loving Father in heaven, what a joy it is this morning, O oh Lord, that we could call upon you because you are our God, you are our Savior, you are our Redeemer. You are the Lord of the Sabbath. What a privilege it is that we could study your word on this Sabbath day. We want you to bless our study this morning. May it be a spiritual experience for each one of us. May we grow in your love, in your grace, and we'll be found faithful in your kingdom. Bless us study this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They said we are going to have Zoom today. And I have not seen anybody here in Zoom. Are you okay now? Are you okay? Okay, for some reason we had some technical problem. But still, God is good. We want to thank you for the media ministry, for the wonderful work they do. Even though we are two or three only in this, in this sanctuary, and the media people are here every week. We want to thank you. What a blessing it has been. And for the technology that we have, that we could worship from home or wherever we are, that we are, that we'll be blessed, Sabbath blessings. Thank you once again. As I have already started this, that we will review what we have studied from the book of Isaiah. I want to spend a little time to go through this so that the lessons that we learn 
will be a practical one, the one that will help us in our, in our Christian experience. Like many other prophetic books, the book of Isaiah gets its name from the authorship. In the very first words of Isaiah, in the Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, very first verse, it gives the introduction. In fact, the whole, whole, uh, whole chapter gives us introduction for this. Can we have the Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1? Verse 1, Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Okay. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. In the introduced right here, Isaiah is the son of Amos. Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. The Lord is salvation. And it goes further if you go to the second verse. And right here, let me say in the first verse. Isaiah prophesies under four kings. It's in the very first verse it says, can you go back to verse 1? Four kings. That is Uzziah, Jacob, Aras, and Ezekiel. And also he mentions that under the fifth king, the wicked king, I'm sorry, Manasseh. So in the very first, left, first words, is gives the basic introduction of the Isaiah. Who is, what does his name mean? The Lord is salvation. And we prophesy under four kings. And he met his death. But the fifth king, the wicked king, Manasseh. And as you go through this introduction, as you go a little further down, we see here, Judah and Jerusalem were strong and prosperous. That material prosperity brought spiritual decline. They turned their back from God. They were apostasy. They were not hearing God's word. They are God's people. Judah and Jerusalem were God's people. So we see here, right here, the great apostasy, the great rebellion of these people here. And we also see, as we go through here, they forsook God and his righteousness. Instead of worshipping, instead of serving God with humility, and showing often love to the neighbors, they were offering useless sacrifices in God's temple in Jerusalem. Meaningless worship that we have been going through in the temple of the temple further. And also there was injustice throughout the nation. They turned their backs from God. They alienated themselves from God. That created for Isaiah to pronounce judgment and also to proclaim, proclaim hope in the Lord that the chosen ones will be saved. Will be saved. Okay now? All right. So we see here what brought Isaiah to give pronouncement. Because people have turned back from God. So Isaiah pronounced, pronounces judgment because they were away from God. And also he pronounces good news, the hope in the Lord and in the one who will preserve the chosen people. And that's what we are going to study this morning. The whole book as you go through, <coughs> we will see this again and again. It will be emphasized. And as you, 
if you go to the first early uh, few chapters, first early chapter, the bulk of it, bulk of the first early chapters talks about judgment. Judgment to the people who are persisting in rebellion against God. And also, we also see God's faithfulness to his promise. Promise of hope. Those who are humble, those who follow God, and those who are be faithful to the Lord. The faithful, faithful ones will be saved. So we see two things here. Pronouncement of judgment to the ones who are rebelling against God. And God's promise for the faithful ones that will keep them safe. So this is the very basic introduction that we see in the very first chapter. There are so many lessons that we have learned. The first lesson itself, there are a few things we should keep in mind. Isaiah's message is the message of our time. The message of Isaiah in his time is the message of our time. If we go to verses a little further down from 5 onwards, a little further down, we see these things here. Because there is a strong and striking parallel to the days of Isaiah and to our days. So this message is for us too. Because there was rebellion, there was apostasy, there was backsliding in the church, in God's people. I want you to understand this morning, I want to view and see where we stand in times like this. Are we a rebellion to God's command? Are we back, backsliding in our faith? In fact, prophets and kings, there's a chapter about call of Isaiah. In page 311 it says, the spiritual conditions during the time of Isaiah is dark and misapprehension of character of God. Can we see what's happening in those days and what's happening today? In fact, Desire of Ages also tells, before the first advent of Jesus, the world, the earth was dark and there was a misapprehension of God. Same language the spiritual conditions of God's people were dark and misapprehension. If you go to Christ's Objects lesson, page 411, it talks the same thing, same language. It tells, in the last days, the earth will be dark and there will be a misapprehension of God's character. So there is similarity parallel that we see in Isaiah's days before the first advent of Jesus and also before second advent of Jesus Christ. What a message that we have this morning. It's all a message to understand where we stand in a Christian experience, in a Christian life. And as we go through these lessons this morning and this quarter, as in fact, we strength, should strengthen us, strengthen our faith in God. There are such wonderful lessons that we have. There are so many lessons we have learned this quarter. But I want to bring another thing in the same chapter. If we go to verses 15 and onwards, it talks about formalism is not a true religion. True religion. Formalism is not true religion. You know, if you go to the 15th and 16th and verses, it just says, people brought sacrifices. God said, no, I don't need this. Because your hands are full of blood. And they came praying to God. He says, I will not listen, he says. In other words, what we are trying to say, formalism of simply coming to church or giving offering or praying is not a true religion. God needs repentance. God needs a contrite heart. And that and that's a wonderful lesson that we learned in the very first chapter. Those who are rebelling, those who are backsliding from church, we have to be careful. Just formalism is not enough. Formalism is not a, a true religion. 
And the third lesson that we learn, again from verses from 19 onwards in the very first chapter. Obedience is the clue for salvation. Obedience is the clue. And in fact, he says, go yourself wash and do certain things, take care of the orphans and the widows. And he says, come in the 18th verse, he says, come let us reason together. Then in the 19th verse, <coughs> 19th verse he says, if you are willing and obedient, obedience is the clue. Obedience is the clue for rebellion. My friends, we should obey. In fact, we always sing, trust and obey, for there is no other way. Obedience is the clue for rebellion. So Isaiah's message is the message for our time. Formalism is not a true religion. God needs a repentant heart, a contrite heart, and obedience is the clue for rebellion. In the very first chapter, this, we learned this lesson. There are so many other chap so many other lessons we have learned. Crisis in identity, identity, crisis in leadership. The world falls apart. The, it talks about so many other lessons we have learned. The defeat of Assyrians, comforting of people. I'm not going to go lesson by lesson and see what. But I just want to bring out some highlights, practical highlights that will help in your Christian experience. <clears throat> in one of the, in the very third lesson, second lesson, I'm sorry, second lesson we have learned, don't put your trust in the worldly princess. Talking about the crisis of identity, the lesson that we learn is don't put your trust in worldly princes. Another lesson we learned in the fourth lesson we have seen, flee from idolatry. When you fear God, we don't have to fear anybody. Free from idolatry. And it further we have learned, the God is strength. God is our strength. And we went for this setting. Salvation is only in Jesus Christ. Your salvation only in Jesus Christ. And we have seen also, salvation is a free gift. So I'm not going through detail of all these things because we may not have time. So being 13th Sabbath is high Sabbath for us. We have baptism and communion service and all. So I don't want to spend too much time in the very introduction. But we have learned lots of lessons in this chapter. But in fact, last week, Desire of Nations, 12th lesson, I think Elder Paul taught us, we have learned sin separates us from God. We also learned God gives pardon for our sins. And we also have learned God gives not only pardon, he gives power over sins. The Messiah is the, the theme of that whole lesson that we learned. This Messiah is the only redemption for us. So what a wonderful lesson that we have learned. This morning we are going to study the 13th lesson, the rebirth of New Earth. The new birth, it's a glorious one. The rebirth of the new earth. The memory text is taken from Isaiah 65, 17. Isaiah 65, 17, the memory verse. Okay. For behold, I create a new heaven and new earth. Let me stop it right here. New heaven, create a new heaven. Why? Is there anything wrong with the heaven? Is there anything wrong with the heaven? In fact, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this. In Bible, there are three heavens. The first heaven is, in fact, if we go to Genesis first chapter, God in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Talking about the first heaven, it talks about the atmosphere. Is atmosphere polluted today? 
yes, God will create a new heaven and earth, the second heaven. With the starry skies, all the sun, moon, and stars. The third heaven, where Jesus, God, dwells. We can study a lot about it, but I just want to briefly say what it is. The first heaven. <clears throat> it says, the very first verse, it says, Behold, I'll create a new heaven and new earth. That's what we are longing for. That's what we are here in this world. We are waiting for the day. We are waiting for the day. And it goes for the saying in the very first verse of 65, uh, 17th verse of 65th chapter. It says, Behold, I create a new heaven and earth. It says, All things will be, past things will be. What does it say? Can we have that verse, please? 65, 17. The second part of the verse says what? The former things shall not be remembered. Former things will not be remembered. What a wonderful thing, right? Past, all the past experiences that we have, he says he will forget. He will not be remembered. And in fact, if I go through this part of the lesson on Sundays, the 17th chapter, I mean, 65th chapter, there's so many promises that he has given to us what the new earth is going to be like. One of the things is what? Old things will not be remembered forever. I want to emphasize forever. Old things will not be remembered forever. That's the first thing in the new earth. And if you go further, and maybe I should go to the 18th verse. Can we have verse 18, please? I just want to bring out some of the promises that is given in this new earth. Verse 18, he says, be glad and rejoice forever. So what we'll have in the new earth? There'll be rejoicing. There'll be joy forever. So things that we are learning is forever. Past things will be forgotten forever. There'll be joy, happiness, and Rejoicing forever. And if you go to 19th, 19th verse, if you go to the 19th verse, he says, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And it goes further saying, joy in the people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard. Sadness, death, and crying will, not, will be eliminated completely in New York. It is amplified in Revelation 21st chapter, verse 4. I did not give that word to them. Revelation 21, 4. This amplifies the same thing here. There will be no, no more what? tears, no more death, no more separation, right? Beautifully it says what a new earth is going to be. So things we are learning, the promises in this new earth, past will be forgotten forever. There will be rejoicing and joy forever. There will be no more sadness, no more death, no more crying in the new earth forever. And if you go to 20th verse, <coughs> verse 20, verse 20, yeah, okay, <coughs> it talks about age. It says there shall be no more than an infant of days not an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old. But here when he says the child shall die, it's a, just a paradox. It talks about continuity of life. Continuity of life. So in other words, what we are learning here, age is not a factor in New Earth forever. Age is not a factor in the New Earth forever. All will live. In fact, those days, Nicias days, when these kings were living, their lifespan was only 47 years. It, only an average, 47 years. And yes, here, what he said, the child will be for 100 years. Child cannot be 100 years as a child. Right? It's just a paradox. He talks about continuity of life. 
Okay, if you go to 21st chapter, <coughs> I'm sorry, 21st verse. Okay, we'll go to verse 24. Let me go to 21 to 23. It, it talks about our labor. We will have, we'll have our own houses. We'll build our own house and we will live, not somebody else will live. We'll plant our own vineyard and we'll eat from that, not somebody, someone else will eat. In other words, what this text is telling us, we are the beneficiaries of our labor. We are the beneficiaries of labor forever. So we see quite a few things here. Past will be forgotten forever. There'll be joy and there'll be gladness forever. Age will not be a factor forever. We'll be the beneficiaries of our own work forever in New York. And we go to the <coughs> And we go to the next verse, verse 24. Verse 24. Okay. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. When he speaks, he hears. Before we could talk, he is there. In other words, what this verse is telling, we are blessed with his presence there in the New York forever. In other words, we are, we are, he'll be there always with us. So wonderful things that we're learning in this New York. We'll be blessed by his presence in New York forever. We are longing for the day when this will happen to us, right? And when the verse 25, and that's in verse 25, one more thing. I, and it's 1030, I think. I saw. Verse 25, it says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. The dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt, not destroy, in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. In other words, this fifth verse is telling, there will be peace. There will not be any kind of fear. It talks about wolf and lion living together. So in other words, this is another character. That will be found in New York. There will be peace in New York forever. So a few things we studied here in the very Sunday's lesson. What did we learn first? Past things will be forgotten forever. And the next thing that we have learned is what? There will be joy. There will be gladness forever. And also we have seen there will be sadness. There will be no sadness sick or crying in the New York forever. We also see that we are with the beneficiaries of our own labor forever. And we'll, we'll be blessed by God's presence forever. And there'll be peace forever. <clears throat> yes, we have only two people sitting here, so there cannot be much interaction in our study. So that's only, that's fine. If you have any questions, even though we are two, you can talk to us and you can share your experience. That will be a blessing to us. Okay, then we come to the next portion of our lesson, Divine Magnet. Divine Magnet. When you talk about magnet, what are the properties of magnet? Two things. Magnet draws certain things or attracts certain things. And if you, if you study about magnet, the opposite poles attract or draws. In other words, north and south pole attract, draws. If it is like poles, north and no south, it will not attract. So the magnet qualities are two. One is drawing or attracting. Number two is repulsing, putting a rejection. And I don't know how good it is, this example for our study, but that's what is given in our lesson. Divine magnet. So God also has these two qualities that we'll see. 
that God will draw the humble people, the faithful ones, those who will stand for him. And in fact, in our lesson, it talks about few things. Who are they that be drawn? And God also would repulse some people who are not faithful to him, who are, doing, who are under the rebellion, who are backsliding most of the time things. So, so I just want to go through some of the things that what it talks about, drawing who are these people that are included. First, we'll talk about the negative. Who are the ones who will be repelled? When they come to God, the God will not accept them. Who are they? The first one I see here, the hypocrites of rituals. It talks about people are worshiping rituals, but they are hypocrites. They say, Lord, 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 but what will say? What will the Lord say? I do not know who you are. They will say, I did this, I did that, right? I do not know. The hypocrites' rituals are the ones will be repeated. The second one we see here, those who hate and reject God's faithful ones. God's faithful ones. There are people who hate God's faithful ones and the righteous ones. And they'll be repeated here. And it also talks about one who worship the pagan gods. The one who practice pagan religion. So these people also will, will see they are repeated. So one of the quality of magnet is what? Don't attract because they are in opposite poles. So here we see that God rejects these people, the hypocrites, the one who worships the pagan gods, one who practices pagan religion, and also one who gives hard time to the faithful ones, God's poor people. We'll see who are the ones who will be attracted to God. Those who are humble, he will save them. Those who are faithful to him and who are humble, God will save them. And it also says he gives joy and peace to his people. God gives joy and peace to his people. So they are the ones who are being attracted to God. The God gives them peace. And also another character he says, he reveals his glory by restoring his people after destruction. After destruction, God gives peace. In fact, the very next part of the lesson, we start study a little bit about this. People, the survivors of the destruction will have peace. Survival of his destruction, God's destruction will have peace. Okay, we'll go to the Tuesday's lesson. I think. Tuesday's lesson, missionaries and church leaders. Isaiah 66 chapter, verses 19 and 20. 66, 19 and 20. Can you have that word? 66 chapter verses 19 and 20. Six, six chapter verse 19 and 20. Sixty-six. Nine. But he talks, if you study this portion, he talks about the survivor, survivors of God's destruction. When God brings destruction, there are some people, the faithful ones, who have survived. And it goes further saying, he will send these people to the ends of the earth, to the ones who do not believe in Jesus Christ. He sends them where? To the place where one who does not know about Jesus Christ. Who are these people? The survivors of the destruction. So, in other words, what we are learning here is what? 
missionary and God's leaders, church leaders. What he says here, he will send them to the ends of the earth, to the people of people who do not know about the God. In fact, if you go through this portion, it says, who have not experienced God's fame, they have not heard about his fame at all, and the ones who have not seen his glory, he sent them to these kind of people to proclaim God is love, God is good. So, in other words, if you go through this, he talks about very clearly. This is the, in the Old Testament, this is a good example of outreach ministry. So God sends this few people who have been survived to the ends of this world, earth, to the people who do not know about Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news. In fact, it, if you go to that same verse, as he says, I think verse 20, 19 or 20, it says, where do, they, where do God send these survivors? He says to Tarshish, to Libyans, to Lydians, to Greece, and to the distant nations, distant islands, it says. It's a wonderful thing that we see here, missionary work, missionary work. Missionary work where? To the ones who do not know about God. To proclaim what? God's fame, God's glory, God's goodness. In other words, we ourselves may not be preachers. We ourselves cannot be teachers sometimes, but we can show God's goodness through our lives. Our lives can be an example. Our life can be a testimony. Our life can be a witness to whom? To the ones who do not know about God. So this, this portion, Tuesday's portion, talking about missionaries, talking about missionaries, Every survivor, every faithful ones, every one believers, all, we should be what? Missionaries. We should be missionaries for the world. Okay, I'm going to the next portion of our lesson since we do not have much time. In the next portion of our lesson, Wednesday's lesson, community of faith. Community of faith. Verse 21. 66th chapter of Isaiah, verse 21. Let me spend a few minutes here. And will also take up them for priests and Levites, say the Lord. Who are, who are they? Who is this? God is talking about them I will take to be Levites or priests. Who are they? In 19th verse, what does it say? I'll send them to who? I'll send them to Tarshish. Libyans, Lydians, Tubal, and Greece, and to the uttermost ends of the earth. Who are they? The Gentiles. The Gentiles. So all these people, God will say, I will take some of them to be priests and Levites. So here, what, this is what community means. This is not Jew or Gentiles. It is not free or slaves. It is not rich or poor. All are equal. All believers are equal in God's sight. In fact, I want to mention this. At the cross, in the ground level, is same. At the cross, the ground level is same. All are equal at the cross. All are valued equal. There is no one high or low. No rich or no poor. No slave or no free. All are equal. This is the community of faith. That we see. Sometimes we experience, even among Christians, these differences. But the lesson we have here tells us what? In God's presence, at cross, there is no difference. We are all one. We are all same. So let us, let us look at the cross. Let us look at God. Let us look at Jesus. This life that was given on the cross. For what? For you and me. For our salvation. For our redemption. What God is doing. <clears throat> Almost getting their time, so I need to wind up, I think. This new earth 
We are studying a particular thing. The glorious land is not too far. Some of us have lost our loved ones. Take this courage. Take strength. The day is not too long. It's not too far that we'll see our loved ones. That we'll see our loved ones. But what we are, we need to be ready. In fact, on Friday's lesson, the quotation is taken from great controversy. Page six, seven, eight. It says, the great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. It's a one pulse. It says, one pulse of everyone of gladness and harmony will be found in the vast universe. And in fact, it goes further saying, from the minutest to the great world, from the minus atom to the great world, the everything, both animate and inanimate, with the unshadowed beauty, will declare the glory of God. What a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be. What a glorious kingdom that God has gone to prepare for us. It's going to come soon. It's not going to be too far. We are longing for that day. We are longing for that day. It's a wonderful place. I want to thank for so many teachers taught every week. Everyone, everyone had their own style. But the message is same. Message is same. The message of Isaiah. The times, the message that Isaiah gave is a message for each one of us. For the times that we live in. God tells if we are faithful, if we are humble, he will protect us. We live in a world that there will be problems. There will be different conditions. If we look at the world, there's another lesson also we learned. There will be more problems. He says we have to be careful of problems that will be within than without. There will be more problems within than without. In other words, there will be political problem, there will be social problem, there will be economical problem. We are not talking about that. It's talking about problem within, of talking about rebellion, talking about apostasy, how we take care of ourselves. So may God help us. May God help each one of us. As we went through this lesson, as we studied these lessons, that we will prepare for ourselves for that glorious day when Jesus shall come. That day we will be able to say, truly, this is the Lord whom we have been waiting. That he will save us. It is not too far. We are living in the end times. And things around the world tells us that his coming is very soon. We are on the tiptoe of God's prophecy. So let us take courage. Let us cling on to God. He is the only source of blessing to us. Because as we study this quarter, the Lord is the only salvation that we have. The Lord is the salvation. And it's a free gift. So let us keep this in mind and prepare, us, prepare ourselves for the great day. I just want to finish with one thing, what we learned from Isaiah. The overall view from the book of Isaiah makes a clear statement. The Lord is my salvation. I will not be afraid. I, I will trust in him. So let us take this as a lesson that he is our salvation, that we will trust in him. We will not be afraid of anything else. May that be our experience. This is my prayer this morning. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for the study of your word, for reminding us that your coming is very soon. You are going to create this earth new. We are longing for the day. Prepare us, O oh Lord. Please, Abide with us and prepare us. Now I plead with you that will abide with us and bless the worship that is going to follow. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.